Okay, and uh, can you say something about Flying Colors? You're about to embark on a, on a tour also with Neil in Europe and some shows in the U.S. Uh, are you looking forward to that? How do you feel about the, how is Flying Colors working? Well, we, we, uh, we're very proud of the album, and it's definitely a different direction for me and Neil. Um, uh, you know, it's a little bit more pop-oriented, a little bit more alternative-oriented, and that was important because Neil and I already have Transatlantic, and we already have his solo albums, Uh, so Flying Colors needed to be something different from both of those, and I believe it really is. And I think some of that has to do with Neil um, not being the lead vocalist and Casey McPherson taking the lead. I think that helped really bring me and Neil to some new places. Um, but we're very proud of the album and very uh, excited about playing live. I know, I know the Mexican fans would love for us to play in Mexico with it, and we absolutely would love to. I'm, I'm very sad that... We're going to be doing such a limited run, but we only had um, like a three-week window of availability that all of our schedules lined up to make Flying Colors happen. So, you know, we, we had to go with a very um, limited uh, range of, of markets that we could play, uh, and most of the offers came from Europe, and, uh, you know, that's where the bulk of the tour will be, and we sque we're squeezing in two shows in America, in L.A. and New York, So, um, you know, the, the sad part is is that it's a very limited, um, exclusive tour. Uh, but, we're, you know, we're very excited about it, and we can't wait for the shows, and we're hoping that, you know, if we can't make it to the fans, that the fans will come make it to, to us and, and, and come out and travel and see a show, because it's definitely going to be very special. The, the fans here, uh, are, some people haven't heard Flying Colors. I wonder if you could... Define the, the flying colors as a sound. As a, how well, did you define um, it? Like I said a minute ago, I think it was important for me and Neil to go to new territory that we don't really have with Transatlantic and with Neil's solo albums. So flying colors uh, ended up taking us to a more proper alternative place. Um, it's not big, long, 20 or 30 minute epics like Neil and I do with Transatlantic and with the Soul albums. These are more concise four or five minute songs um, that are rooted somewhere between the Beatles and Queen and Coldplay and U2 and the Foo Fighters. <laughs> and somewhere in between that range is where Flying Colors is. Uh, with a little twist of yes thrown on top, sprinkled on top. So that's kind of the sound of Flying Colors. Okay, and uh, you, you've collaborated with many, many important artists. The list is so long that uh, probably it would take <laughs> the whole interview just to mention all the people you've worked with. But I wonder, if there is, are there any musicians out there, um, prog rock or important musicians, that you, that you want to work with that you still haven't worked with? Yeah, uh, you know, my wish list and is, is very broad because my musical taste is very broad, and I love so many different kinds of music, and that's kind of what I'm very excited about in this stage of my career, uh, is exploring all of those different sides. And if you look at what I have going on in my life right now, it is very broad. You know, I have Neil's solo work, which is very progressive. I have Flying Colors, which is more alternative and pop that appeals to the the Beatles fan in me. Uh, then I have Adrenaline Mob, which is more hard rock and metal, and that kind of appeals to the whole, uh, you know, Pantera side of me. Uh, I have a band with Billy Sheehan and Richie Coxon right now, which is more classic rock, uh, with a kind of bluesy, funky edge. And then I have a, an instrumental band with Billy Sheehan and Tony McAlpine and Derek Sherinian, which is more instrumental based progressive music. So yeah, if you look at what I have going on now, there's such a range. Um, and I'm so blessed to be working with so many great musicians. I mean, everybody from Billy Sheen to Steve Morse, uh, obviously Neil Morse and, and everybody in between. Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, to get to the, the, the question with who's left, um, I mean, I guess there's the dream, the, the dream gigs and then there's the re realistic gigs. The, the dream gigs, the people that that I dream of someday playing with are people like Paul McCartney or Roger Waters or Pete Townsend. You know, those three are my biggest musical heroes of all time. And to, you know, to, to be in the same room with them uh, behind the drums would be, you know, the ultimate dream come true for me. 
But uh, the, the more realistic people that I would still like to collaborate with, um, I still still am talking uh, to Michael Ackerfeld from Opeth about doing something together. So I think he and I really could have a, a, a great creative um, collaboration that hopefully I'll see come to, to life someday. And I also would like to do something more in the thrash world, uh, the more metal world, because um, that's another side of me that I haven't truly tapped into. I've done these these shows in America called Metal Masters, and it's myself and Charlie and Frank from Anthrax and uh, Dave and Kerry from Slayer um, and Phil Anselmo from Pantera and uh, David Ellison from Megadeth. So I've done these live collaborations with these guys that are in the, the more thrash metal world, and that's also a big, big side of my past, and uh, I would love to do maybe a project or a band you know, in that world as well. Okay. And uh, just uh, to finish up and, and pass on to, uh, to, to Milan, which is the, the radio host show that I was talking about at the beginning, uh, could you say something about uh, the Mexican audience the last time you came around? What uh, you, you told us that it was a great audience that you felt. Could you say something about the Mexican audience in your experience? I, I've always said that Mex Mexico uh, is, is filled with, with some of the greatest fans in the world. Every time I've played... Uh, You know, Mexico City in particular, every time I played there with Dream Theater, it was always one of the highlights of the tour. And uh, the tour that Neil and I did last year for Testimony 2, uh, the Mexico show was absolutely one of the highlights as well for that. So I, I can't say it enough, and, and it, it's sincere. I'm not just saying this because, you know, it's I'm trying to kiss ass. It, it's a sincere <laughs> thing when I say that, that I, I absolutely love playing to the Mexican fans. They are just filled with such incredible passion and you could tell that that they really love the music and and that's the greatest audience in the world that you could play for is people that are being moved by what you're doing on stage and uh, i absolutely love playing in mexico 